I'd like to focus on session 18 of seminar 14 by looking at the ways the unary trait relates to topology, specifically the topology of the torus and the fundamental polygon Lacan uses in the seminar to talk about the dynamics of repetition in relation to suppression, something that is featured in his theory of metaphor. I've been looking at metaphor in terms of parapraxis and metonymy because it gives me a way of understanding the connections between Vico and Lacan, who both have unique but similar ideas of metaphor. Lacan's theory is more in the temporality of the modern subject, but Vico shows how this works equally well for the first human thought. In the background, I had been working on the way the 1936 film My Man Godfrey had seemed to confirm William J. Urban's thesis about how Lacan's discourse theory, sexuation, and topology coincided. The film is also about fire, so the theme that Claudio Scarbi and I have been tossing back and forth over the past few weeks became important. At the beginning of the film, we see humanity at its minimum, derelict homeless men encamped beneath the shadow of the Queensboro Bridge in New York. There are three main scenes in the movie, but an implied missing scene tells the story of how Godfrey Park gave up his wealth and social position to voluntarily join the ranks of the forgotten men at the shanty town. He is a modern Prometheus in a strange backward sense. His stolen fire is a kind of paralysis at first. He's stuck at the dump. But I have argued to Claudio that Prometheus is about the strict sequencing rules of divination in early cultures. We also talked about the secularization of this myth in Aeschylus and beyond, and I insisted that Vico's version was more informative. Here I stick to that thesis to suggest that the sequence of events in the film are uncannily related to a sequence of Lacan's discourses, which in turn are grounded in the sexual distinction and its relation to the four discourses. The film is also about fire, so the theme that Claudio Scarbi and I have been tossing back and forth over the past few weeks became important. At the beginning of the film, we see humanity at its minimum, derelict homeless men encamped beneath the shadow of the Queensboro Bridge in New York. There are three main scenes in the movie, but an implied missing scene tells the story of how Godfrey Park gave up his wealth and social position to voluntarily join the ranks of the forgotten men at the shanty town. He is a modern Prometheus in a strange backward sense. His stolen fire is a kind of paralysis at first. He's stuck at the dump. But I have argued to Claudio that Prometheus is about the strict sequencing rules of divination in early cultures. We also talked about the secularization of this myth in Aeschylus and beyond, and I insisted that Vico's version was more informative. Here I stick to that thesis to suggest that the sequence of events in the film are uncannily related to a sequence of Lacan's discourses, which in turn are grounded in the sexual distinction and its relation to the four discourses. To sum up the Prometheus debate, I insisted that seeing Vico's theory about how the expressive function, representative function, and conceptual function structured human subjectivity at all scales was not a system of categories that would justify distinctions. The problem with such formalizations of Vico's theory has been that they are misleading and missing a dynamic element without which the idea of Freud's transience and the related idea of conatus would be impossible to understand. Sequence is about counting, which is both dynamic and self-regulating. So I saw good reasons to connect sequencing to the Fibonacci numbers and, as Lacan does, the unary trait. In session 16 of seminar 14, Lacan makes further attempts to relate the numerical one to discourse and desire. 
I sense that there is a kind of eternal history going on here, in the way that the one and the little a other are not static but dynamic. At the same time, they seem to destabilize and also stabilize, and hence there is the idea of transience that lies at the heart of Vico, Kassirer, and James Joyce. I want to start with another example from a famous essay that appears in Ecrit, the story of the brother and sister on a train riding past a town with the usual conveniences. The brother looks at the signs over the doors and concludes that it names the town that they have come to, which he mistakes to be Om, or gentleman. But the sister calls him out. But instead of correcting her brother's confusion, she herself makes the same mistake, only she sees the other sign as evidence that the town is not gentlemen, but ladies. There is a subtle point here. Neither the brother nor sister think that there are two rooms behind the two doors. Rather, they see a town in the background, with a door over which there is the name of the town, which is what they dispute. This makes the two doors different from ones that would open on the lavatories for the separate sexes. Also here, I see that there's a shadow of the argument about there being no such thing as a sexual relationship. We have to imagine that we are looking at a door edgewise, as if it were an edge or bezel of a mirror, and slicing it down the middle to show that the mirror is a cut, not a reflection as is usually thought. The two doors are like a sliced apple or orange. We see the interfaces of the thing that has been cut. We now have to find new names for these surfaces and the cut that created them, and history and art provide us with a catagraphic cut and the isomeric profile, which I add to conatus and transients to begin my collection of new critical terms. The ultimate aim of my project is to resuscitate Freud's energetics theory using Lacan's ideas about libido, which are critical for the understanding of both discourse and sexual difference. Libido is a fixed commodity. It doesn't get created or destroyed. It circulates with an economy that means that none is ever lost, just moved around. The circuits that move libido around have critical nodes or section views where we can see how libido operates. The restroom doors are one and the position of the doorknobs is critical. As the butterflied faces of a split between the brother and sister's theories about the name of the town, they must mirror each other. But the theme of the restroom names invites us to compare the situation to Lacan's Mathemes of Sexual Difference. Now we must wonder how the catagraphic cut between the doors, which creates the split face of ladies and gentlemen, is, as my man Godfrey seems to show, all about fire. Prometheus steals fire because fire, like the libido, is a fixed commodity. It requires circuits to circulate, and the film is about the circulation of fire and, at the same time, the necessary shifts in modes of discourse. William J. Urban's ambitious thesis to connect sexuation with discourse and topology is within reach if we understand the role of Prometheus as a proper thief. We all know how much Lacan is against the idea that man and woman are separate parts of a being that was once whole, with four legs and four arms. This is Jung's utopian idea of sex as a return to an archaic unity, but it seems to proliferate wherever the topic of sexual difference comes up, even among experienced feminist theorists. I've taken Lacan seriously when he uses Euler circles to create a union that is not an intersection, that is, a non-relation. This may destabilize couple therapy's ego-based attempts to heal broken marriages, but it replaces it with a better theory of conatus and transience. I replace Lacan's Mathemes of Sexuation 
with pluses and minuses, so we can more clearly see the quadrilateral theme. We could mistake this schema for symmetry if Lacan had not already given us, in so many places in Seminar 14, the figure that is the mathematical notation for the torus, what's called the fundamental polygon. The torus has two voids, one that is continent and the other, the whole of the donut, so to speak, incontinent. Think of the bicycle tire. By superimposing Lacan's diagram for how repetition, the form of demand, relates to suppression, the form of desire, we can see how the sexual difference between men and women relate as the 2D surface of the torus. Because we can easily visualize the torus and even consider it to be things like donuts and bicycle tires, we tend to forget that the torus is really a 2D topology characterized by non-orientation. The form we see and use on our bicycles and eat with coffee is the immersion, which is what happens to non-orientation when it is pulled into the three dimensions of perspectival space. We get traps, which is what Prometheus finds himself in, thanks to the mythic mentality's insistence on precise sequences in the ritual procedures involving fire and divination. Mythic thought does not have the ability to see things as things about the representational function. Even more so does it lack the ability to theorize. The laws that come out of divination are absolute and unreasonable. They are a one-to-one -one circuit of law and order. But they are instructive in the way that they are first demonstrations of libido's own one-to-one -one rules. Lacan would say, that the key to all this lies in the unary trait, which is a one that both is and isn't itself. I can't explain my reasons here, but I would say that the one is audioactive, meaning that we don't know the one is a part of the counting system until we come to the number two, at which point we have to go back to the one and revise its meaning. There are thus two ones, one that is voiced and one that is counted. Audio activity justifies looking at the four corners of the torus's fundamental polygon as places for the four discourses, the university, hysteric, master, and analysis. Here we see the film My Man Godfrey use the discourses as a template for its three main visible scenes while it reserves or suppresses the fourth discourse as the place where the audience sits. But this subjective use is simultaneously an objective use, because it is the place where Godfrey has already had his failed love affair, the thing that made him voluntarily become a derelict, living with other forgotten men. Of course, this is all too much for one bite out of the Lacanian apple, but it does suggest that William Urban's attempt to find a toroidal order within Lacan's different theories is on the right track and can inspire our own ventures into popular culture. The point will not be to do film interpretation or art history, but to use works of art themselves to understand Lacan's biggest ideas, namely anamorphosis, extimacy, and the death drive. Then we will be standing with the giants of psychoanalysis, Jacques-Alain Miller, Mladen Dollar and Richard Boothby, who propose reorganizing Lacan according to these three themes, respectively, as a kind of ultimate Borromeo knot.